Okay, let's work on the exercise 13.6.1. It's uh, B, the part B. Part A is uh, pretty straightforward. So um, we'll work on part B. Part A, we show that uh, uh, the gamma function has an expansion. So, uh, the complete gamma function, gamma AX is equals to e to the minus x, and then a power series, although it's not exactly a power series, zero to infinity, yep, a minus one factorial divided by e plus n factorial x to the power a plus n. So a can be a, a, a real number or maybe even a complex number. But uh, uh, so it's not a total, totally an integer power of x. But uh, that uh, doesn't matter because uh, part b is going to show that this is equals to the another power series expansion in the text. So for equation 13.7.6. So just uh, a page before that. So you want to show that uh, whether this is equals to, um, in this case, there's x to the a power, which is the same. So you, you actually take that out and the rest is a uh, integer powers of a uh, series of integer power of x so, and zero to infinity minus one to the power n divided by n factorial a plus n to the x to the n power okay so this first Question part B is to show that these two are, are the same. Okay, so we'll try to work on that. So basically, the idea is uh, uh, you have a this is an exponential function, so it's not in a power series, but uh, it has a simple power series expansion. Everyone knows that, and. So if you have a power series multiplied by another power series, except you have x to the a, but you have x to the a on both sides. So basically you can ignore that, cancel this part. And to see that this is equals to the rest, uh, the, this series times this series. Okay, we write that ignoring that's uh, x to the power a. And the coefficient of x to the n is uh, slight, slightly more complicated, so we can give it a symbol, take a notation. So basically we want to show whether this is so n from zero to infinity. See so this coefficient, say, like, we call it c sub n, but uh, it has an a, it depends on a, so it actually a coefficient that is a function of a, so we uh, just uh, have an argument a, just indicate that this is a function of a, and then power of x to the n power. We want to show that this is equals to, this one we, we can now write this uh, as a power series, which is, in this case, it's simple. simple. So, uh, so uh, this is just like m from zero to infinity. And you have minus x to the n power, which you can take that out, so minus one to the n power, x to the n power, and divided by n factorial. So that's, uh, that's the exponential function, the series, and this one is uh, easy enough, so we don't give it uh, another another symbol um, for the coefficient. So basically, now this is uh, 
e to the minus x, you multiply by the rest. So the rest is sum of a n from zero to infinity. And now this is uh, another more complicated uh, coefficient. So uh, we can give it another name. So like a d sub n is also a function of a. Okay. And then x to the power a. All right. And let's write out the explicit form of xc sub n and x sub n. Uh, and then d sub n, so c sub n, a is just just by this uh, what you want to, to prove is uh, just this one, so minus one to the n power n factor will divided by a plus n. Okay, and then the d sub n is. Also, a function a is just basically this part. Right, this is a minus one factorial divided by a plus n factorial. Okay, so we want to show that multiply these two series combined all the power of x in the single power of series of x will give you this and the coefficient is c sub n given by this expression. Okay, so uh -huh. to, to show that uh, first, uh, the easiest part is to check a few cases, the lower lowest order, so n equals to zero, one, or maybe two, or to see how many cases you want, you want to go, but uh, at least zero and one. And so let's see. Uh, this is this is zero, which, which means it's uh, x to the zero power, which is a constant term. So you want the coefficient of a constant term coming from the product of this two series. So obviously, this is a power series of x. This is a power series of x. The when you multiply by the two series, the constant term is the constant term from the first factor multiplied by the constant terms of the second factor. And the constant term for the second factor with m equals zero, obviously this is one, this is one, this is x to one, so there's one for zero factor is one, so this is just one. And for this one, the d just, the zero, n equals zero, so just d sub, d sub zero. So, so obviously you want to see whether, uh, C sub zero A is equals to D sub zero A. And from this one, D sub zero, this is one, this is one, just just basically one over A. This is one over A. And from D sub zero, so this is uh, zero. So you have a factor a minus one factorial, and then divided by a factorial. So basically one over a. So both are equal to one over a. That that's correct. All right. So that's uh, straightforward. Now uh, the second case you can check is uh, like n is two. Uh, n is one, so the next one is n equals to one. So you see c sub one a, whether it's equals to the linear term, which uh, x is linear in x, so the x term coefficient of the power of x from the product of this two. So obviously there are two terms. One is the the constant term multiplied by the linear term. And then the linear term multiplied by the constant term. So you add the two terms and see what this is. So the constant term is this is one. The linear term is d sub one. So it's just d sub one. Okay. And then the linear term of this multiplied by the constant term of this. So this linear term is 
m equals to one, so it's minus one. This one factorial is one, so it's minus one, minus one times d sub zero because uh, uh, linear terms down constant terms, so it's minus d sub zero. Yeah. Okay, so and so c sub one from this this one is uh, n equals to one. So n equals to one. This is minus one, and this is one factorial is one. So it's basically a one over a plus one. So c sub one is equals to one over a plus one. So let's see what this is. And d sub one is n equals to one. So basically you have a minus one factorial divided by a plus one factorial. So that's uh, one over a plus one times a and minus d sub c, which we already have that, so one over a. So you add the two, you get the common denominator, a plus one times a, and then uh, this is one minus uh, a plus one, so one minus a minus one. So one minus one is zero. And you'll see your minus a divided by a, so it goes to minus one over a plus one. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot the minus one. This is one. Yeah, n is one, so this is minus one. One minus minus one divided by a plus one. So, and this is correct. So we at least check the the two cases. N is zero and n is one. You know. So this is correct. So that this statement is correct up to n equals to one and now, uh, we can keep going, but uh, no matter how many cases you check, this is still not a proof, right? So uh, we not we need to do a more general case to see whether they are the same. So uh, let's pick one of them. They uh, see some, so a, a general case is, like C sub n, C sub n a equals to what? So if now this is uh, this is n, right? And so so you have the product of two, and obviously that uh, uh, in this case uh, there could be uh, n plus one terms. Because uh, you have have zero, the zero of order times the n order will give you an n order, right? Zero n, and then one times n minus one, and then two times n minus two, and so on. So you need, need a summation, and all together you have uh, n minus n plus one term. So so basically it's uh, say it's sum over Well, let's start with with, with uh, start with uh, so another notation whether we should use m or n. So we sum sum over the n, right? Obviously, so you have from zero to n. So if it is n, then you multiply it by zero of this one, right? So that's n for all the multiplied by the c of order of this one. So let's use a notation, say, like, keep it like m. So m from zero to n. And now uh, the coefficient from whatever this, this, this uh, power series uh, coefficient of x to the m. The nth order, m order, so it's minus one to the m divided by the m the period. So that that's this one, and 
Uh, actually, I actually I want to go with the, the other way around. So uh, let's let's use not use J because I I want to keep it like not a this not this is uh, a whole number. Say like this is from J from zero to n. Like I I keep. So start with this. This is a C of order and one all C of order up to the nth order. So this order, this is n, but you can say this is sum of a j, right? And then this is say uh, d sub j. Function a, and this is a j of order, and you multiply by this uh, the order from this is n minus n minus j. So j plus n minus j is just n. So n. so this one is minus one to the n minus j. Right. And then this is uh this is also n minus j. So we know. Okay. And the idea is that uh, we can separate this in in the two parts. So first is the uh, just like what we did here from start from d sub zero because we already have d sub zero. So we write out the j equals zero term explicitly out. So this which is d sub zero a, and so now j is zero. So this j is zero. So this is multiplied by minus one to the n power, so, and then divided by, well, this is zero, so n factorial. Okay, so that, that's this, that's the j equals zero term, and then plus the rest, which is j equals to one to n, and you can reverse the order, doesn't matter, so minus one to the n, minus j and minus j factorial to c sub j okay we are separating in uh, in two and the reason uh, to do that is uh, try to get a recurrence formula for c sub n so because uh, c sub n will have a, a n plus one term but uh, the Earlier, the, the previous order, so C sub n minus 1 will have n terms, right? And let's see if we can get uh, a recurrence formula out, out of this. And the idea is uh, you can work, work out this, you can shift the, the index, but uh, before we shift the index, we can work on this D sub, D sub j. Uh, in the as a function a, say we want to have a instead of a, a instead of j from one to n, we want it to be j sub. We want to increase. Uh, uh, one of the changes to j is uh, sum over uh, from zero to n minus one. Which is uh, which which uh, involve c sub n minus one. So you want to uh, say uh, if you call the j say basically if if we call say like a j prime equals to j minus one, then when j equals to one, j prime will be uh, zero. So that would be fine. So, so this would be our new j. So, so the old j would be j prime plus one. So all everything changed to plus one, right? Everything would say no. So every j in on in this expression will will increase by one, right? So, but we want to recover j. So we want to change this of j to j minus one. 
Then when they increase by one, we go back to D sub J. Okay. And so how do we relate uh, DJ to DJ minus one? So we can look at that. If you have DN in here, we can look at if what is DN minus one. So DN minus one is uh, basically reduce this N, right? Reduce this N by one. And then uh, we can basically keep it unchanged if A is increased by one, right? So if A, so if V sub N minus one, if we increase A plus A is one, so the, then it's unchanged in this factor, but then does A also increase by one? So it's A, A plus one minus one factorial, which is A times A minus one factorial, right? So this is, this one will be, we have an extra factor of A. So, uh, so, so uh, it's basically this one, A times DN, right? But this is this one, right? And you multiply by A to change this to A factorial, right? Then will be dn minus one a plus one because uh, when you decrease this by one, increase this by one, the denominator doesn't change, and then uh, uh, a plus one factorial, a plus one minus one becomes a factorial, which is uh, the same as the right hand side. So we can basically use this to uh, change our this factor. So basically we. This is dj, d sub j a, which is this one. We can change this to d sub j minus one and evaluate it at uh, a plus one. So let's, let's write it out explicitly. So d sub zero is all it know is one over a. So it's a, we have a minus one to the power n and a times n factorial. So that's d sub zero a, and the the rest is uh, just use whatever we have over here. So j equals to one over n and minus one n minus j n minus j factorial. Now we change that. So d sub j is d sub j minus one and change a to a plus one and then divided by a so one over a here okay that, that is this one um, now the the, the next step will be uh shift this J from J from one to n, we shift it to zero to n minus one. Okay, so the first term is uh, keeping it the same. J to n factorial. So you change J from zero to n minus one. So we already said that uh, that means uh, you uh, all this J increase by one. So that means you have minus one to the n minus j minus one, or you can say n minus one plus j, or minus j, right? So j increased by one, yet, but then you subtract that, so you have n minus one minus j. And this one is uh, n minus j minus one, like earlier, right? And then you have uh, one over a here. The, but a doesn't depend on on the summation. Actually, you can take that out from the summation, one over a. And then you have g sub j minus one a plus and evaluate a plus one. Okay. So that is uh, this 
best summation. But now you look at uh, C sub n. C sub n is uh, given by this one. So it's from 0 to n. And d sub j, oh, that's, that's the same minus 1 plus 1 becomes d sub j. Yeah, d sub j. j from 0 to 1 g, and d sub j and minus 1 to the whatever the, the upper limit is n. So the upper limit is n minus 1. This is n minus 1 minus j. And then the n minus 1 or the upper limit minus j with the n minus 1 minus j factorial. So this whole thing, this summation is just c sub n, not, not, not uh, n minus 1, n minus 1, because this is n minus 1. Evaluate at uh, n equals 1. Okay, so uh, basically the idea is this, uh, you have the recurrence formula, if you write it out explicitly, you want to show that uh, C sub n a is equals to minus one to the n power a times, actually you, you have a here, you have a at the, on both sides, so we can take that. Uh, Factor of one over a, and then uh, s minus one to the n power divided by n factorial, and then uh, then this is c sub n, just c sub n minus one. Plus c sub n minus one and evaluate a plus one. So that becomes a a recurrence formula, right? Uh, Yeah. So yeah, we, we have every term. So <laughs> so now uh, we want to see this is uh, this is correct, and the idea is uh, this whether this is satisfied by what we want to show whether this this is equals to this one, right? And to show that this uh, we want to see whether this one this expression where we put it into here is equals to we put this expression into here, right? And what we can do is just substitute this, evaluate n equals to n. This is n minus 1, and a becomes a plus 1. So we want to check. Mm -hmm. 1 over a, and you have minus 1 to the n power, the n factorial, and plus when this is uh, n is my, uh, minus 1, n changed to n minus 1. And then divided by, this is n factorial becomes n minus 1 factorial. And a plus n, so n changed to n minus 1, but then a changed to a plus 1, so this factor doesn't change n plus n. All right, and um, now the, what we can do is add the two terms, get the common denominator. So you have one over a, actually you can take the minus one to the power n out. And so that leaves a negative sign in here. And then uh, you can take the you have a common denominator is uh, you have uh, the common denominator you have n minus one factorial times a plus one right so you have uh, n factorial a plus n the common denominator is this one so for this for the first term 
your n factorial, but you don't have this factor. So you get a plus n here. So that's the first factor. For the second factor, you, there's a negative sign. And this is n minus one factorial because this is n factorial. So you need to multiply by n here. And then uh, now you have n and n cancel. So cancel n and n. And then you have a and cancel with this a. So this is minus one to the power n divided by n factorial a plus n, which is exactly this one. So, so basically, you substitute this to here equals to this in g here. And that is what we, we, we want to show uh, at the beginning that this is uh, correct. So now, uh, this means that this is proved, that this, this statement is proved. Okay, so uh, that's uh, the answer to this part B of this question.